What is up, cool cats of the interwebs? This is Haley bringing another episode of the Buy It, Try It, or Deny It podcast for June 2020. Rolling into this, we do have a special guest today, and I'll introduce them first. We got our writer, Kate. Hi. And then after that, you know, it's just our normal crew of Brennan and Mike. What's up? Hello. Wow, they sound so depressed. It's okay. Um, so <laughs> let's start it off with the games that we are going to be talking about for June. So I'm going to start it off with the Xenoblade Chronicles um, Definitive Edition. It is a JRPG. It's developed and published um, by Monolith Soft and Nintendo. It's coming to the Switch, and you can catch that coming out tomorrow on May 29th. I'm so it's incredibly awesome. excited. Wait, yes. what? it's awesome. Like, oh, you, Mike, have you played the original? I played the original. Okay, all right. So, I've only played, I've only played the second one. I didn't, I didn't play the second one. I only played uh, the one that they're redoing for tomorrow. All right. Oh man, this. Uh, I I enjoyed I enjoyed my time with the second one. I keep hearing really good things about this one. So, I'm like, excited that every time they talk about the epilogue, it's getting longer and longer. Like, they first said it was going to be a couple hours, and now they said the new epilogue is like 10 to 12 hours. Yeah, yeah which I'm is hearing like, it's its own little mini game now. They keep that's adding insane. more more time to it. That's, 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 that's like, I feel like that's what you want in a definitive edition. You want, like, not that you want just the base game, but then, like, something a little more on the side. Hell yeah. I'm, like, really excited for this whole definitive package. Especially because, like, it was only when you played it, Mike. It was on the 3DS, right? Uh, or, no, it was the Wii, right? It was yeah, on the Wii, Wii first. Yeah, when I I couldn't play it on the 3DS because like you needed a new 3DS or whatever. Could not, could not play it. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. That was unfortunate. Because you needed the uh, the extra little analog stick, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, Do we have any confirmation if the best way of early game leveling up is still going to be pushing squirrels off a bridge? Because that's what I want to know. It better be. I mean, that was... I mean, they gotta, I saw, you gotta do what you gotta do, right? Yeah, you gotta Good do. for being on the bridge in the first place. Exactly. Yeah, Leave those squirrels alone, Mike. Leave them alone. Hey man, if it's how to level up in the beginning, gotta do what you gotta do. Like I said, I stand by it. Shulk is the man. I mean, you could end up so overleveled so early into the game. I mean, those squirrels are heroes. Their, their sacrifice is not forgotten. I'll take that. Mike, when when do we get to see a shirtless shell from uh, from a Super Smash Bros. Ultimate? When can I see my boy shirtless? I don't remember what part he's shirtless in. God damn it, Mike. You're it's supposed to have that here. time stamp down, Mike. Dude, shit, shit's been like 10 years. Come on we, now. We rely on you for these things. It's really down. been there. Well, that, that, that was your first mistake. Wow. No, I mean, I only ask because, like, yeah, I just think it's a little funny that that was, like, the one costume they included for him. I'm, again, I know nothing about the first one, so I'm only asking. Like, I think it was, like, his uh, his swim trunk costume or something was yeah. how you could get him shirtless. I don't so remember what heart, but I know that it was a swim trunk, and then it wasn't Shulk, but one of the guys was actually stronger if he was in his shirtless uh, version. <laughs> oh, that's dope. Oh, okay. Oh, so I'm gonna. All right. So it's probably like a, like a costume of some kind. Maybe not like a. No, it was I'm an armor. Gonna... I think it was like an armor or like a. No, no, it was a costume, but it was specifically you weren't wearing armor. And then there was a guy who got stronger if he wasn't wearing armor. So him being shirtless was like really actually good combat wise. That's actually dope. I'm, I like shit like that. Little tiny things like that. That's dope. I mean, as someone who judges look uh, armor and, and costumes and games entirely by the aesthetic and not whether they're actually good, put everyone in their swim trunks, honestly. Oh, yeah. swim, swim trunk run. That's not yeah. a bad idea. You don't want to see Roadhog from uh, Overwatch in his swim trunks. Hey, I mean, sure. Oh, yeah. Do I, I really don't mean? feel comfortable right now. <laughs> um... Uh, I, I don't want to see this person in their swim trunks. Uh, Why not? Because I don't even know who they are. Well, that's fair. I I'm just curious about fucking Shulk in his stupid Smash costume. Jesus. Shulk did have some of the best Smash looks. <laughs> he did. And I feel bad that that's like the only way that I'm like familiar with his character. But I guess that's the same thing with 
a lot of people replace like, that. A stupid question. Is he in the latest Smash Bros? Yes. He is. Okay. Yeah. So like they I don't know what came out first. Smash Bros or Xenoblade 2? I forget when Xenoblade 2 actually like came out. Um I don't remember. I don't know, but I remember picking that up kind of early, and I remember really liking just the aesthetic. I wasn't really too much of a fan of the big titty anime girls. I mean, obviously, as, as a as a heterosexual male, like sure, it's kind of cool for a little bit, but after a while, you're just like these proportions are just like they're just like balloons. Like, man, like this is just kind of weird. If someone walks in on me playing this, they're gonna be like, dude, why are you playing like a porn anime game? You know? And I'm like, I'm not. I swear, it's the plot. I'm, and so this one, I'm kind of looking for the, you know, the small titty anime girls. So no one has any, no one has any calls when they come You out. really should be playing Xenoblade for, for Ricky. He, he's the, like, orange blob thing that's an assist trophy in Smash with the long ears. He's so cute. Oh, we were, um, um, you were talking to us about that in the chat. He's, like, 40. And I didn't realize that. Like, even though I was familiar with the story of Xenoblade, I didn't realize that he's, like, 40 years old and has 11 kids. So, um, the Orange Blob's got game. That's all. Aw- he's the hero <laughs> pong, right? The hero he- pong? Some- something like that. But he's he's orange. He looks like an egg with very long ears. And he's a really annoying... I love him, but he's an annoying assist trophy in Smash where he can freeze you. He can put you to sleep. He can trip you. That's Sounds actually like my life in a nutshell. <laughs> Without the eleven kids, because yeah, I was gonna say they don't <laughs> ain't got no money for that. He's introduced me to your eleven children <laughs> that I didn't know about. No, no, fifteen years. Kaylee's gonna have eleven kids. Oh no! <laughs> oh yes, yes, yes. I will have a small army consisting of two esports teams. That is my children. <laughs> What? Yes. Oh my god. Those are my children. That, that's all I'm making in life. I'm gonna just have really successful esports teams. There we go. They're gonna make a version of the sound of music about your kids, but instead of the Von Trapp family singers, it's gonna be like the Haley family esports team. Uh, we gotta work on the name, but we're getting there. We're getting somewhere. That's my game plan here. Yeah, that's a, a sound of music for the 2020s. <laughs> But they're only I mean, it's either that or I somehow get my dumbass on a reality show. So I'm going to take the easy way and just make an esports team. If you have 11 kids, you might end up on Jerry Springer. I'll know That's who my baby daddy is. That's the only sad thing. But yeah. Forget your shirtless boys. Forget your girls, however big or small their chest might be. Ricky <laughs> is where it's at. He's adorable <laughs> and somehow has more game than I will ever have. He'll be on the party. He's on my party confirmation already. I got Shulk and Ricky. Those are the boys. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, of parties, before we sit here and just talk about Smash all day. <laughs> Smash all day. Anyway. Um... <laughs> oh my god. I had to. <laughs> Listen. Oh. My pun game is killer. I don't know why. Uh, it... We're gonna we're gonna talk about The Last of Us Part 2. Um slide it in real quick uh it's an action adventure it's published by naughty dog and sony um it's coming out on the ps4 and that is coming out on june 19th and my boyfriend matt has already said that i have to take my ps4 to his house that's fair i mean i don't blame him it got plenty of i mean it's it's it had what is what two or three official delays on the release date before it's finally coming out i don't remember i just know the latest one was in like february or march after uh covid hit yeah so he he's been waiting long enough Haley. to be (laughs) fair he has been waiting yeah so the the whole story is is i traded in my ps3 for ps4 and i got the last of us with the dlc um bundled into the playstation 4 so I met Matt, and Matt was like, oh, I want to play The Last of Us, because he was an Xbox guy at the time, and he's like, that looks really cool. He played it for four weeks straight every single weekend that he came to visit me at college. That's what he did. And he eventually beat it, and he cried. 
Well, that's dedication. Yeah, you know, those are the kinds of emotions this game gives you. Was he dating you or was he dating the PlayStation? Uh, apparently he was dating my PlayStation. Well, apparently, Ooh. yeah. I think he's still dating me for my PlayStation, so... I mean, don't fix if it ain't broke, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes Look, a man's got his priorities. People have strong <laughs> opinions about The Last of Us. Um, the... The game is the, the source of my current favorite meme, which is their very... Have you guys seen the very inf infamous comment about um, when the very first trailer for The Last of Us 2 came out and one of the infamous top comments on the first trailer was, I gotta say, and I'm sure everyone will agree with me, Ellie looks a thousand times more bad A than that blonde guy, Gary, what kills the monsters. <laughs> so, uh, more Ellie... More badass than some blonde named Gary. Who's the blonde named Gary? What? Am I missing <laughs> something? I feel like I'm missing something. Anyway, yeah, uh, that's what was part two. Looks pretty good. <laughs> uh, Highly anticipated. We yeah, don't I think explain it's one of the bigger here. games of the year. And I gotta pre-order my copy. I'm, do we know if Joel is alive or dead or what's going on with him? He's in the trailers. Um, he's alive. He does not look good, but he is alive. Do we know yet if we can pet the terrifying looking dogs from the trailers? Is what I want to know. I don't want to pet murderous dogs. That's a no no. It's a no go in my book. No murderous dogs. That's like, don't pet the zombies. They're going to bite you. But all dogs in game should be pettable, even if they want to kill you. Um. My character's hands disagree. <laughs> not trying to lose no fingers. I mean, there's an entire rating system that rates games based on whether or not you can pet dogs. So the real question is, where is The Last of Us 2 going to fall on this rating system, given that it contains dogs? You can feed you dogs probably... Doritos in Assassin's Creed. Wait. Oh yeah, you can. I think that should be number one, but that's just me. Well, for dog pet ability? For being able to feed dogs Doritos. <laughs> True. Oh my god. Oh yeah, yeah. We stand Doritos in whatever Assassin's Creed 3. Was it Assassin's Creed 3 or Black Flag? One of those. Whichever, I did not play either of those games. Whichever era that was. Uh, I mean, this looks cool. I'm very curious to know where they're taking the story. Um, and what's really going on with Ellie. Is this the last one? Are we like, is it over after this? Do we know? I don't no think clue. we know one way mm. or another. Yeah, I'm just curious where this story is going to go. Um, first one made me cry, so it's kind of like, I don't know if I got those emotions, you know? Mm. Dude, I totally feel like I'm missing out on like this big thing. Like, I still haven't played the first one. So I just, everyone's sitting here like, oh my god, it's the best shit ever. And I'm like, I don't I'm know worried that it's one of those games that's been in development for so long and people have gotten so hyped i mean it's been a six year six almost seven years since the first game i'm worried that it's not gonna live up to what people have been expecting See, i just think the hype has been allowed been allowed to get so huge I'm, that's completely fair. i'm sort of hoping they like pull out a god of war come back and it's like the first one was good but let's make this follow-up one like so much better so i'm sort of okay hoping... but who's the best video game dad joel or kratos i mean the one with the bigger muscles of course i mean joel apparently just look at that beard no. I, in, instead oh, of shit. instead of uh smash bros the next crossover we get instead of a fighting game which would be just a bunch of video game like moms and dads getting together to share pictures of their kids <laughs> hire me this is a perfect game idea <laughs> and when joel strung off his kids and this is when ellie killed this one guy and this is when he she killed the other guy we could get joel we could get kratos we could get bowser in there uh oh that is a whole family fiesta <laughs> that's what yeah you know that's what we'll call it family fiesta family, fiesta. family photo fiesta yeah family photo fiesta you collect and trade like pictures of of other video game dads, Someone's kids, and steal this idea. Well, there there could be a dad joke mini game. Who can tell the best dad joke? If you don't make this game like right now, and somebody else does, 
I'll be sorely disappointed, but also you heard this video game idea here first on BTD. Yeah. So hire me, Game us. Studios. Hire me. <laughs> <laughs> I will just make games about dads exchanging photos of their children, and it'll have Joel and and Kratos and Bowser and uh, God, who else in video games is even a dad? I feel like there are more. Oh, uh, the Bioshock guy. <laughs> 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 a lot of weird dads um <laughs> anyway this is not what this podcast is about sorry <laughs> listen i am all for it but uh let's take it back to the last of us part two yeah sorry no you're all good all good we go off track all the time that's all this time. podcast I, I, if we don't it doesn't feel right exactly yeah. i don't know what we're doing if uh obviously Haley's not hosting it if it's not going off the rails so <laughs> I, I don't know like i'm excited for it i don't know I, I don't really have much to say about it just because i didn't play the first one like i watched it played obviously because my boyfriend played it and he was super into it um we didn't get a lot of ellie in the first game so i'm yeah very curious to know and to see where they take her and more of her backstory and more of who she is because you don't really get to experience her too much because you're playing as joel the whole entire time and mm -hmm. in the in the dlc it's like you play as her and you do get to experience a little bit of her so i'm curious to see where they go with that and how they continue to develop her as a character um but also what they're doing with joel because clearly he's in the trailer like mike said like he's alive um but he's not in the whole thing so all i know about what they're doing with joel is that troy baker is excited the guy who voices him yeah he's he's been speaking very highly of whatever he got to do and or say in the game see the way that like takes me is is i i still potentially could see him as dying but if he dies i feel like he'll from what you guys said with the voice actor being so excited he might get an honorable death like it might not just be like oh psh, he just got shot in the head that's the end of him like it could potentially be honorable maybe him sacrificing himself for ellie in some sort of way or him even just i don't know making it to the end of the game and then just being like oh natural causes and he floats away into the darkness i i don't know I mean, maybe he could he could survive as well. But do we also know why they decided to focus on Ellie the second time around? Like, if Joel has a grandiose story, why not focus on him the second time and why her? I don't know. I just know in this game, somebody fucks her over and that's why she's doing what she's doing. Um, but I don't know why they chose Ellie instead of Joel, especially with the development that Joel gets in the first one. It's incredible. And... I actually wanted to see more of that. Yeah, that's something I'm definitely... And I feel like, as you know, once we can play the game, we'll be able to understand why they picked Ellie. I mean, uh, the one thing that I, that I think they might have chosen her for is maybe age. Joel's a lot older <laughs> now, depending on how many years have passed. Clearly, he's looking rough. I mean, if he's in his, I don't know, 50s or 60s, he's not going to move the way he used to when he was in his 30s. Do we have a confirmation of how many years have passed? Now that I think about it off the top of my head, I don't know it's how five. long it's... Okay. Okay, so it's not that many, but still, no. the guy's looking ragged, and he's been through um, Yeah, shit. from what, what we've seen of him, he's definitely not looking at his best. Yeah, and from a gameplay stance, I see picking Ellie being a little smarter because they show, you know, um, in the last, the state of play that happened recently, they show she's able to climb things. She's able to jump in ways Joel wasn't just because she's so much younger than him and more agile. So from a gameplay standpoint, I understand that because it allows the developers to do a little bit more as far as exploring the world and coming up with creative ways of um, dealing with issues. Mm, yeah, that's probably like, huge. I definitely agree with that. Also, it's like if they wanted to go to a third one, they could roll easily into a third one and age her up a couple years again and still not have any issues whereas again depending on how old joel is you age him up another five years he might be pushing 40 mm -hmm. 
Yeah, if, if it's only five years uh, between the first one and the second one, that puts Ellie at like 18 or 19. So still very much the young side of things and also removes a little bit of the weirdness of your p potential weirdness of controlling this very, very young, like 12, 13 year old child in such a dangerous world. I feel like it also just story wise, um, it allows them to expand and develop her as a character. So we see her when she's younger and now we get to see her thoughts and how her views have changed now that she's a lot older and you know the the character that she's developing into um and how the world is through her eyes which i think will be very interesting um and how she's taking everything because you know she's actually grown up through this apocalypse and it's like joel was already 20 or so when it started i honestly i'm throwing out random numbers for his age because i don't know how old he is but ageless eternal yeah, there we go but you know he was already halfway through his life cycle by the time this hit so there's another thing there too it's just it's very reminiscent to me of um, uh telltales like the walking dead how at first it was you know you were playing as the lead and you were carrying after clementine you know joel and Ellie. And then obviously something happens to Lee, and then the subsequent seasons have you in control of, of Clementine. But it was very much, I feel like, a deliberate kind of design choice, almost to what Haley said. And like, it like breeds a new perspective. Um, you have like this; it puts you as a player in a different kind of role. Because I guess playing the original as Joel, you know, you were playing that like parental figure. Um, but then when you're playing as Ellie, like, you kind of have a completely different mindset. Like, it's no longer like, oh, I have to protect this little girl. It's like, I have to look out for myself. So I think just it gives her a lot of agency, too, because there were, there were a lot of people in the first game who wanted access to Ellie for what she was, what she represented. And now we're getting to step into her shoes. I mean, yes, we already did that in the DLC, but we're getting to step into her shoes and let her kind of step up and take her own agency. Yeah. Instead of being the the plot coupon that people want, mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's that's huge. Exactly, giving her the agency is exactly it. Um, and again, just just be kind of to be able to play in like a different kind of mindset through a different characters' lens. I feel like is an interesting thing that like most other series don't really have the luxury of doing. Um, sure, like they, I feel like again, I'm thinking of Metal Gear Solid. Like you have this Solid Snake character, and you play through Metal Gear Solid 2 and you're playing as Raiden the whole time and you see Snake through the lens of him being like a legend because you're not playing as him or in the other games you are. So like again, it's like a whole different perspective on that kind of person. You could be playing as Ellie, possibly trying to find Joel. Like that's the oh she finds out, oh he's still alive somewhere and oh he's gonna go find her. You know? That could be like a huge plot point. And then she finds him, and then he dies, and then she has to grow from that. Blah, blah, blah. Shit writes itself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Ma, uh, Brennan's gonna get a call from Naughty Dog. Bro, <laughs> like, write, write this for us. God, we, we need a, a deadline. Two weeks. Here you go. Here's everything. <laughs> We're gonna put it on pause just for you. Get in here. It's late we, again. We've already, gone, we've already gone gold, brother, but we still need you. You're saying we should kill Joel? Oh, right, the geez. DLC. <laughs> yeah, for real. But, I mean, The Last of Us is, it's one of those games that I think is sort of timeless. I feel like if you own a PlayStation, you have this, or you have friends that have played it, or you've heard about it in some way, shape, or form, because, let's just be honest, PS4 games especially their exclusive lineup, they're iconic. Sony does has great independent studios or in-house studios that make, you know, great single-player narrative-driven games. And this is just one of them. And I feel like it's definitely a force to compete with um, when we talk at the end of the year about, you know, the best games of the year. And I feel like this will definitely be on one of them but i do agree it's like well is it going to live up to the hype and i feel like trying to 
say is it going to live up something to something isn't necessarily fair because we don't know where it's going to go. <laughs> like we might all hate the ending of the game. We might hate the character that Ellie's become because she went from being an extremely young teen to now being, you know, a young adult that has their own views, that has their own, you know, choices and they they're self-aware. So I mean, we might all eventually hate it, but I feel like it's going to just, I feel like it's going to be phenomenal regardless of how I feel about Ellie's character. Mm. It's just one of those games. Yeah, I imagine that it'll do extremely well regardless. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And you know that they're going to bring it to the next gen console. They are. That's what they did with the, uh, that's what they did with the last one. Yeah. 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 Yeah, the game with the year edition of this will definitely be PS5. Exactly. So yeah. Hold on to your horses, avoid spoilers for, I don't know, like four months, and buy a PS5 and then play on your PS5. Or pull a Haley and buy it for the PS4 and then turn around, trade in your PS5, and then get it on the PS5 too. Or you love it so much you buy it for both. And then there you just we go. You have two copies and you lend it out to all your friends and, and make them play it too. You got two lend it out. I'm, I'm a red shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Charge your friends to play it. Make money off of them. <laughs> this is your side hustle. Letting ha- well, and charging you buy- all your friends to rent if, Last of Us. <laughs> if you buy a PS5, you can stick it in a separate room. So you have the PS4 in one room and the PS5 in the other room, and you can charge your friends to rent your rooms. And then you can also create a snack bar, and they can buy snacks off of you. But using yeah. fresh- that's the yeah, best side hustle. Dead. That's your new side hustle. Using <laughs> rest room is free. Dead. Rest room is free. So, this ain't gonna work. work. This ain't going to work at all. This we already totally saw gonna... the rise and fall of renting games and movies. Mike renting out his snack room isn't going to change much. I'd rent out his snack room. What do you mean? No, it, it, Blockbuster couldn't do it. You think Mike can? Blockbuster did it for like years. And then Netflix had to come along. Exactly. So Gamefly <laughs> is just going to run Mike out of business. <laughs> They're gonna come back. <laughs> Gamefly is gonna ask Mike for a deal. They're gonna ask him for a collaboration. Hey, let me buy your company. Twenty million, it's yours. There we go. That's how we make money in this side hustle. Nobody steal these. Twenty five. Twenty five million. <laughs> yeah, the whole point wasn't just to rent out games to my friends. The whole point was because I was trying to sell the Gamefly for millions of dollars. Yeah, that's you know what? I can't. I have to respect that. There's so many good <laughs> ideas in this in this conversation tonight. We're trying to make money. Profit 101. What happened yeah. to us? Where have our morals and values gone? Where we now are just selling our corporate souls into to quote golden ideas. Welcome to America, my friend. Oh, jeez. Look, as our overlord childish Gambino says, this is America. Look, I'm not saying I need cash to fund my Gwent habit but I'm not not saying I need cash to fund my Gwent habit listen I just need cash I don't need to fund a habit I just need cash like let's be real here ain't gonna say no to more money <laughs> after Haley picks up a fake $25 bill off the ground and tries to go into GameStop to buy some games uh, she gets sadly arrested by the police. That does not actually happen. But with that, we're gonna roll it over into the next game that we're talking about called Death Come True. Oh, I'm so excited about this one. <laughs> Lots of people have uh, opinions about it, <clears throat> Mike. Anyway, um, it's an adventure game. It's developed and published by Two Kyo Games. Uh, anybody want to help me on that second one there? I, I, Izanagi. Izanagi. Uh, listen, I can't pronounce words. Haley isn't that good, even though she's an English major. Moving on. Uh, its platforms are PC, Switch, and PS4. It's coming out June 2020. Not a solid release date yet, but hey, it's something. Uh, the best way to sum this up is it's it's a choose your own adventure. We like it those. comes we to like us those. from the mind behind Danganronpa, the Danganronpa franchise, which means it's gonna be bonkers. It's a fucking movie. It's not it's a, a movie. fucking movie! We discussed this. 
It's a movie, dude. It's a movie. Choose your own event. It's not a game. It's a movie. Choose your own adventure movie. It's a live action game. Thank you. Dude, if you press buttons, it doesn't count as a game. Oh my God. I'm telling you. Like, this looks wild. Sure. Okay. But it looks oh, wild. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. It, it does look interesting. You know, it's the like, story and everything looks pretty crazy. It's a fucking movie. But it's a movie. Yeah. I just, I just want to. Just, but they I classify the visual novels as games. So this is a live action game. So is a game. Is a game. Well, it's visual novels have a lot of text to read. And I this think this would probably have a lot of plot in it. I mean, have you played a Dungan Rampa game? They're incredibly plot heavy and elaborate. And this is this is the same guy, the same guy who came up with their stories. But I think they're giving him even more freedom to go wild. And it's going to be. I'm along for the ride. I don't know if it's going to be great. I don't know if it's going to be terrible, but I am along for the ride. I yeah, see. honestly. Oh, sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead, Mike. I will say the only reason I'm even remotely interested in this is because it's the guy that did Dong and Ropa. I bought uh, a Vita because of Dong and Ropa. You and, and still, the rest of the gaming community. <laughs> I still play that shit to this day because those games are insane. So when I watched the trailer of this, I found out it was the guy that did Dong and Ropa. I was like, oh, shit, this game could actually be pretty crazy. Well, and honestly, that's the reason why I picked it, because I, I've i played one of the Danganronpa games. I've read the manga that they've written about it. I thought this was really cool, and that's what kind of pulled me was that it was live action. Like, it's actual human beings, and yes, that can look funny. Yes, it can be silly, because it's all pre-scripted, but I still think that's really cool, and being whose head this is coming out of, you know it's gonna be fucking intense. I mean, look at this guy. I'm looking at the gamer article, and that guy in the black with the mask looks real scary, and the A's upside down, and the R's backwards, and it's like, uh, what's gonna happen? <laughs> I... More than anything, I have learned when someone says the word Danganronpa just to kind of go along with it, even if I'm not sure what's going on and it'll turn out great. But, I mean, not the games, the time that I was in this this karaoke bar in Tokyo shortly after one of the games came out and the guy, the like waiter comes up to me and is like, do you want a Danganronpa drink? And I'm like, sure, not knowing what's going to be in a Danganronpa drink. And he brings me this poison green cocktail and like slowly pours a shot of something bright red into it while like talking in this deep slow voice about how I must submit to despair but dang if that wasn't a good drink <laughs> and um the, what another thing is, is I'm reading this article the composer also did the Danganronpa series but also they did the Evil Within and Killer 7 so you know that yes. soundtrack's gonna be badass oh yeah I mean, even if I don't like the game, I'm going to be listening to that soundtrack. I think the only thing I'm not, I'm really surprised at is they're putting this on iOS and Android. So I'm curious to see how that translates over. I mean, of course, that's so easy. All it is is just a video and you hit, you know, like A or B or whatever. But still, it's like, I wouldn't want to play this on my phone. And I wonder if that's not more for a Japanese audience than anything, because Danganronpa games have also gotten released for iOS and Android, and like while I personally couldn't imagine it, I have definitely seen people playing Danganronpa on their phones and their commute home from work on the Yamanote line or whatever, so I'm wondering if that's not because a Japanese audience is is accustomed to that from that creator. I feel like you definitely have a really good point. I'm like I said, like I'm really curious to see how that translates over to smartphone screens. Um, and I'm also like curious, like why? Why would anyone want to play this type of game on their phone? Like that's just so much video that you have to watch. Um, so, so it is video that you're watching, right? Hmm. Sounds like a movie. Damn it! <laughs> like a movie to me. <laughs> it's not a movie. Look at what I 
think this this article as well, what I'm liking is I'm seeing like <laughs> such and such an actor plays the investigator, such and such an actor plays the detective, the hotel employee, and then it's like the psychopath girl. Like that's just it's it's her job. Like you see everyone, all the characters listed by their occupation, and then one of them is just the psychopath girl. And that's my new title. Please refer to me as that. <laughs> Apparently she was in Kill Bill Volume One. Oh, great movie. Hey, oh wait, she plays as the uh police detective. Wait, maybe hold on. I gotta look up. Yes. She plays as the police investigator. So I think that's really cool that they got something from such an iconic movie. Kill Bill is fantastic, even though I've watched it a bajillion times and still don't grasp the plot line of it. Um, I mean, that's really cool just to toss in there. She's like, Kill Bill. What the? <laughs> what? Just to say that. <laughs> like, what do you mean? You're like, oh, yeah, I don't get the plot line. I kill Bill like 100%. Like, what do you mean? They've <laughs> also got. Yuki Kaji, who is one of the most prolific voice actors of recent years, as a hotel concierge. I mean... Like... <laughs> if the shoe fits! <laughs> like, they've got this guy, he's, he's like, you see his name in every anime that's, like, been coming out over the past couple years, and they cast him in this, and... He's he's he doesn't even got a name. He's just hotel concierge. So if, if that's the level of talent we're getting for a character named hotel concierge, I'm here for that. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe they were just like, oh, uh, we don't a... know he fits. Where do we put him? <laughs> maybe he's such a badass concierge that they're just like, he is beyond all names. He is the concierge. Maybe he's <laughs> undercover. He's a secret you know. spy. Maybe. Side note, yes, I have watched Kill Bill, all the Kill Bills, multiple times. And I I, I just, I don't know. I like them. They're it's great the movies. Time, really. I, I just read the wiki. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan's going to come through the screen and beat me. Oh, God. You're going to get a box tomorrow in the mail. And when you open it, a fist is just going to come out and just smack you right in the face. Probably. See, Kill Bill came out during a time when I was a lot younger, so I watched it a lot when I was younger, and I didn't fully, like, understand it when I was younger, and as I got older, I was just like, oh yeah, that's a good movie, but I never really watched it again after that, so, uh, if it's on, like, FX, I'll turn it on, just for background noise. I don't even, I can't, I can't talk to you anymore. Brand's gonna, like, <laughs> set my house on fire. Yeah, she- she hasn't seen killed. Before. I really think with this game, though, we just gotta be along for the ride the way that you gotta be with this guy's creations. Is it a game? Is it a movie? What the heck is it about? I don't know, but i'm I'm here for it. i'm gonna i'm I'm gonna trust it. I'm gonna give it a try and probably not be disappointed. I hope there's some great action. I want fantastic action and fight scenes. Like Kill Bill. All I know is that this is like Danganronpa. It is going to be brutal as hell. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I mean... That's another thing. Like I'm very curious to know. Like, are they going to like censor all the blood and gore and blah 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 blah? Because I feel like there has to be. Like, of course, there's going to be murders. It's called Death Come True. But like, are we actually going to see that? Because yeah. it is. I hope action. they make the blood bright pink, like the Danganronpa <laughs> games. <laughs> And that's my thing, like, it's live action, so these are, like, you're actually going to see human beings in a dead-ish state, so I'm curious to know how they're going to show that, and hopefully they don't censor it too hideously. Mm -hmm. Really, uh, what do they usually do for that in, uh... Really, honestly, depends. I mean, even even within Danganronpa, it's depended. Like, the games had the pink blood, but then when they got TV adaptations, they changed, they were able, even animated TV adaptations, they were able to change the blood to red, and then the, the live stage show, uh, I believe, didn't wasn't allowed to use any blood at all. So, really, I swear they take these things on a game-to-game basis sometimes, a movie or whatever this is. Well, it certainly looks uh, interesting. To say uh, I'm definitely here for it, and I feel like this is going to be something that I purchase and play. Will I write a review? Probably not. This doesn't seem like something I'd want to personally review. Um, but 
it, it does have me, so I think it's depending on the price. It's definitely something I want to pick up. Yeah. I wonder, are they going to dub it? Or are they going to subtitle? I mean, probably at the very least, we're going to get an English subtitled version. But do you think we could get a full dub or not is the real question. Because these are live action Japanese actors speaking Japanese. Mm, I honestly hate dubs with human beings. I hate it. Anime, I'm fine. But dubs with human beings, mm, I don't like it. Yeah, the voices never match the face. Yeah. I just they they haven't confirmed one way or the other, and I think whichever way they go on this, it could have a pretty big effect on on whether people buy it or not, and how well it does. Because yeah, most people have a strong opinion on dubs versus subs, one way or the other. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. what I'm thinking. Is I gotta wait to see when it comes out how it looks, how the acting since it's live action, how the acting goes. Um, if they do dubs, voices, how do the voices sound? This is one where I'm interested. I just don't know if I could fully commit to it at this point. Yeah, I feel like it's one of those things where... Oh, excuse me. Um, like, if... Personally, if I didn't purchase it, purchase it, it would be something that I watch. Because it's still... I feel like it's still one of those games that... Even if you don't want to sit there and spend all your time playing it, it would still be interesting to watch somebody else play it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean... I plan on getting it, I plan on playing it, but that's because I feel like the creator of Duncan Rapa. I have enough goodwill for him. I have enough trust in him at this point that I'm diving in, even knowing as little as I do about it. Fantastic. The hell? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Air high five. Great job, guys. Great talk. Um... <laughs> I'm going to kick it over to some final thoughts. Um, You know, if you have any final thoughts about what we talked about today, uh, if you want to list off the games that you're going to buy or try or deny that we talked about, if you just want to sit here and spend five minutes talking about, uh, I don't know, how great your day was. I don't really care, but we're going to kick it over to some final thoughts and we'll go down the list and we'll start with Brennan. Yeah, I'm I'm like pretty sure I'm going to preload the Xenoblade Definitive Edition on my Switch after this podcast, so so we can play tomorrow. Um, uh, I'm really excited because I feel like I need a quality JRPG in my life now that I've finished Final Fantasy VII, and while I want to play Final Fantasy IX, I'm like taking a breather. You know, it's like I gotta just mentally digest everything. But yeah, man, I just oh and, oh. There's so many yeah. noises going on right now. I don't know what to think. Kate, we'll kick it over to you. All right. While I wish I could say the same thing that Brennan was saying, that, oh, yeah, I've got Xenoblade um, queued up for tomorrow, I unfortunately am coming off the tail of another incredibly long RPG, and I just don't quite think I have the time or the mental, I mean, the mental place to commit to it right now. So probably going to give myself a little break before jumping into Xenoblade, maybe do some Stardew Valley, Animal Crossing, that kind of chill level stuff. Um, I just finished a six week death march to try to finish one of the longest games in existence. So, but Xenoblade is definitely a buy for me. Death Come True is a buy for me, no matter how ridiculous it gets. Um, I don't know what to think about The Last of Us 2 yet. I have feelings, but I don't know if they're positive or negative feelings yet. But we, all of the games we talked about today seem really good, and I, I plan on playing them as soon as I have the energy to play long games again. Well said, Kate. I'm just hoping I'd be Persona 5 Royal before Last of Us 2 comes out. Oh, damn, dude, you're still on that? I had to take a break, bro, like... Oh my god. Like that shit was just draining. Holy shit, dude. Oh, good luck. Good yeah, luck. past couple weeks I've been playing Dragon Ball Fighters just because UI Goku came out. Oh. oh. <laughs> oh. But, yeah, out of these three games, I think Last of Us is the one I'm getting. Um, Xenoblade is tempting. Maybe I'll get it later in the summer. Um, but right now, Last of Us 2 is the one I'm really looking forward to. I don't know what I'm doing with my life, in all honesty. I want to play so many things, and yeah. I just sit here and I'm like, oh, but that takes work. For example, I s- bought The Witcher after watching uh, the show. Hey, do what I did, six-week death march, and uh, then write about it. 
I booted that thing up for, I don't know, probably like an hour and I haven't touched it since. So. <laughs> I just I just passed 100 hours the other day. <laughs> I need to play it. I just, I don't know. It's one of those hey. things where like, I'll get in the mood for it and then I won't touch it. For example, I did the same thing with Dragon Age. I got in the mood for Dragon Age, played that game nonstop because I was also at college and actually had the time to do that. And then I haven't touched it ever since it just sits there yeah i've racked up about a hundred hours in just over a month and i have not played anything else in weeks it's real bad yeah that was the thing about persona 5 for me is i got about 80 hours in a week and a half two weeks the yeah that shit just drained me because i realized i wasn't even here finishing the game the yeah, yeah. is so real here and Haley's just I, like eh. I kind of had that hit me the other day when I was I was like oh god I still have two entire DLCs to go yeah oh, I was like oh, damn I still got so much to do oh my Mike you and I are on the vibe and on the same wavelength with our games right now <laughs> I'm just like uh that's not me See, my, my real problem, my real problem is that I, uh, Gwent came out on Steam, so I've been taking a break from The Witcher to go play Gwent. Oh my god, took a break from Gwent to play more Gwent. I did! Yeah, that really, amazing. that's where I, that's where I killed myself, that's where I... <laughs> that's so funny how that ends up, though. So that's much Gwent. Great. Yeah, so Haley will be playing her movie when it comes out. Yeah, <laughs> I'm probably, uh, gonna, gonna play Death Come True. And of course, Matt will end up purchasing The Last of Us, so I won't see my PS4 for I don't know a couple weeks. So just don't get Death Come True on the PS4. That we have an excuse not to lend him the PS4. I haven't seen mine since FF7 remake. Uh, mine just sits here and collects dust because the only real time I turn it on is for like Netflix or YouTube or anything like that because there's just nothing i want to play right now so i i should play more god of war but uh those valkyries are hard as shit so i just gave up dude you've been saying that for months now yeah i honestly no i here's the line here's the line <laughs> Haley gave up Haley put it down i'm not even trying <laughs> like anymore. Everybody. We start this podcast. We've been bitching about those Valkyries. Yeah, That's I'm so like, fucking hard. I remember you specifically talking about the Valkyries and how hard they were like, a while ago. Yeah. Like, I can't. I just can't. I try my best and I can't. I get so <laughs> close and then I just fail. He just looks at the cover and just goes, I can't. Not today. <laughs> and then I put it back on the shelf. <laughs> Story of my life. Oh, poor God of War. <laughs> Eventually. Oh, Every time down upon me. Pulls out, she pulls out the game case and a tear comes down and she just goes, fucking Valkyries. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, while I'll get roasted, uh, we're going to end this podcast there. So thank you for tuning in. Um, like I said, we had Kate, Brennan, and Mike today. And I thank you guys for joining me and talking about these games. Uh, hit us up next month. We're going to start uh, talking about the games that are coming out for the latest consoles, the PS5, the Xbox, whatever that one is, because nobody really plays Xbox anymore, and oh. the exclusives that are coming out for that. So I hope to see you then. Have a great day, evening, or afternoon. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.